Hello everyone, welcome to my new channel. Through this, I will try to provide in-depth insights and practical demos on topics related to AI, Salesforce, AWS, and web development in general. In the first video, we will talk about zero copy architecture, which is in news since last few months. We will take the example of zero copy data federation with Snowflake and Salesforce Data Cloud. So before going into textbook definition, let's talk in terms of real world analogy. Remember the last time you moved to a new house? You probably had to do a lot of packing, arrange transportation and then unpack everything. I am pretty much sure like me at some point you wished you had a power of teleportation. So with just flick of fingers you could instantly move to a new place without all the hassles and without worrying about things getting lost or damaged. Sounds too good to be true? Well maybe in the physical world but not with when it comes to data. Zero copy architecture in Salesforce Data Cloud offers a similar kind of magic. So it lets you share data from systems like Snowflake to Salesforce without actually copying it. The data stays in its original source and Salesforce access it directly, securely, in real time and without duplication. Using zero copy integration, user can get the benefit of data cloud or CDP like data harmonization, identity management, built-in analytics and activation without the downside of physical data movement. What is the difference from traditional methods like ETL? In ETL, we generally copy data from one database to another. Often this process entails some sort of data transformation called extract transformation load, but it has its own sort of challenges, which you can see in the table. So first is replication. So data needs to be copied from original location to the target in the ETL, while in zero copy data remains in its original location. Second is updates. So data is only accurate as of last synchronization point, whereas in zero copy data is accessed in the real time. Cost, definitely user has to pay cost of moving and syncing the data. In zero copy, no data movement cost is calculated. Then regulatory requirement, obviously data needs to be uh, going from one system to another. So regulatory requirement comes up. Then errors, any data movement introduces potential for errors and mistakes. In zero copy, you save a lot, but there is no movement. So there are no errors related to that. And then obviously maintenance. So now let's go to our example, where we will see how data will be available in Salesforce from Snowflake via zero copy architecture. So we will talk about this demo with the help of this uh, uh, document in which all the required steps are listed. So the first step is the creation of org with the data cloud. So we know like Salesforce now if it's org with the dev org with the agent force and data cloud bundled together. If you don't know how to create it, you can go to um, Google and type Salesforce, Salesforce plus data cloud plus uh, or oh, Salesforce Data Cloud plus Agent Force Developer Org. Now, if you scroll down, it will give you this link. You go here, again scroll down, click this link, and you give all the required details. And Salesforce will give you a new org in which the data cloud is present. And the next step is similarly creating an org uh, of Snowflake with 30 days availability. Now, for that, you go to Snowflake Developer. Dialogue. Yeah, this link. Go here. Start for free. Get all the details in the work emails. You can give even your Gmail ID. In the next step, it will ask you for the cloud provider, either of AWS, Google, or Microsoft Azure. Select any one of them. I selected AWS. And then it will give you a link of the new or 30 days availability. So after that, the next step is. First step is install OpenSSL. For that, copy this link. Go again on the Google. This is the Windows uh, link. So you can get the similar link for Mac also. So scroll down and uh, download either the EXE and the MSI link of Windows 64. So after that, the next step is ensure its path is added in the environment variable. So that is an important step. Otherwise, OpenSSL will not work. So let me make it a little bigger. As you have seen, I have added the link of the OpenSSL bin file in the path folder, which you see here, like this. Next step is step 5, which is generate pair of public and private keys by running following commands on the comp or command prompt. So this pair will be used by integration later uh, for Snowflake to query data from Salesforce Data Cloud. So the first step is go to the command prompt and use this command. Copy and let me go to the command prompt. Open, paste. So it will it will generate the copy for you. Similarly, if I will go to this link and copy and 
it will give you another file in which your public uh, public key is listed so once the private key and public key files are generated verify them by opening in your editor like you see here both public key and private key are available so now the next step is creating warehouse in snowflake so from now onwards we will perform some steps in snowflake so for that login into the snowflake and uh, go in the admin section click warehouse click plus warehouse view button give some name type should be standard and size can be x small and that can be enough for our purpose and click where create warehouse now i am not going to create the warehouse because i have created few of them earlier on the purpose of warehouse in snowflake is uh, uh, little different it's not used to store any data but it is used to provide computation power computation resources for example running the query performing the dml operations loading the data and so on so once the warehouse is created we have to create an integration user which will connect to snowflake via salesforce so for that click plus sign at the left bar and click sql sql worksheet or projects worksheet and plus icon so click here then sql worksheet and then just copy the command create your user i have already created the user and will be to create it next step is alter the user and set the public key so either you click the plus sign here or you can make the changes in the original sql worksheet also i will suggest click the plus sign now just put the copy the public key which you have created here and just put it here and run your command so just copy and show it right so just just set it like this and run it again i'm not running it because my data cloud for my data cloud user everything is set next step describe your user so once everything is done just you can copy this command click plus and describe your user so you see my data cloud user is set up properly few important points to note it password should be blank and login name should have value and uh, default role as you see here is system admin so the next step is to run this command show grants to user data cloud user the user which we have set up previously in sql worksheet let's copy this let's go to the snowflake interface and click plus sign paste and run so for me it is showing that the role account admin is granted to the data cloud user for you it might not show yet because we have not granted the account admin role to this user uh, but how to grant this we will see it later but before that let's talk a little bit about role hierarchy in snowflake so if you can see this diagram on top we have the account admin role below that we have system admin and below that we have some custom defined role it's a little different from the salesforce world if you are coming to snowflake from say, uh, say from salesforce like me uh, but we will work with the top level role account admin to make things simpler for us but Please keep in mind this is not the best practice so now let's see what are the next steps at step number eight we have to create the database and schema so let's go to snowflake interface and uh, let's go to the home icon click data and you will see like there's an option to create database now for me like you know i already created few of the database for you we can show you how we can create it click this plus new database uh, button give a name a new database you can give it any name click create so database is created right on the on the left side we can show this it already have two schema information schema and public schema we will create a new custom schema for us let's create click plus schema and give a name a new schema let's click create yeah so the schema got created and we can see like uh, uh, one thing that this ownership of this database lies with account admin and if i will go to the schema here also it shows that ownership lies with account admin and this is why we are working with the top level um, role because we do not have to worry too much about access and security now let's see what is the next step it's saying create a new table using the below code for table go to sql worksheet and then we'll run the below sql ensure you select the right database and right schema before running the sql we first copy it
uh, projects again plus sign and here we have to select the database our new database and then our new schema and then run this command i am not running it because i have the working database schema as well as a table created under this database context context one database to see like it is properly created we have to run this command let's select the database for me it is context one select the proper one for you and the right schema and then run it uh, for me it is showing me that table new context doesn't work i think uh, i have given some other name so yeah my table name is this contact one data right so yeah if you see here um, the table details should pop up properly so now let's go to the next step yeah so basic steps for the uh, snowflake are completed now now perform some of the steps in salesforce so first is establish the connection let's go to the uh, salesforce interface i have already logged in into the salesforce interface i will click here snowflake in the setup so i have already established this connection earlier on for you you have to click new so now click give some connection name and then account url you must have got this url in your email once you have set up your uh, once you have set up the trial org for the snowflake username is the login name uh, we have set up the integration user so it should be the login name uh, for me it is uh, let me go to the snowflake interface and uh, my user is dc cloud user see where i have run it earlier on yeah so this is data cloud user yeah. so data cloud login so i hope you have used the same name just copy it and you can use it in the salesforce interface and then the private key this is my private key just copy it and use it so if the connection is established properly you will see the connection like this status is active so after that you have to go to the app launcher go to the data cloud go to the data stream and you have to create a new data streams i have already created few data streams earlier on and one with snowflake but we will go through the step once more i will click new so if the connection is established properly you will see this new tile in other sources section so i will click snowflake click next select the connection and click and select the database under which you have created the schema as well as table mine one was this context one db so i will select the schema and your object should be available here now for me because i have already started using the object it's available under this tab for you it should come under here but still now i am pretty much sure you will not see the schema and the object in the screen and the reason is access and security which we have touched upon earlier on so what is happening is let's go to the snowflake interface as we have described earlier your database as well as your schema are owned by account admin and the table also and context one data so it is also you know owned by account admin but your integration user role is not account admin so it is not able to access these objects so for that you have to provide a proper grant to your integration user and how you can do that you have to run a command let's see how right. you see how to run it yeah you have to run this command grant to account admin to user data cloud user if you will run this command then let me go to the projects and plus so after you run this command and run this command show grant to user data cloud user it should start uh, showing that account admin is the role of data cloud user and now if you will go to the salesforce interface and again see your connection again select the database now under this schema the object name should start appearing so once this connection is established you will start you will start seeing you know in data stream this particular connection this particular data stream so its data connector type is snowflake stream type very important is direct access and this is how you know the zero copy architecture is achieved which you will see on the top this is the salesforce crm connector and here the stream type is ingest 
the data is copied into the data cloud but here in this case if you will see here there is no copy of the data so the next and final step is to load data in snowflake in the context table and then see in salesforce whether the data is immediately available or not uh, uh, via zero copy architecture so for that go to your uh, uh, snowflake interface click on the home page uh, click home here and uh, then click data then select the database under which and scheme under which you have created the table mine one is contact one db and uh, just go to your table so once you are in this window then you will get an option to load the data now you can browse your file and upload the data um, but creating the file in the format in which we have created the csv might take you some time to make it simpler i have created a github repo this is my github public repo in which i have created a db uh, macro so what you need to do is just and uh, then all you have to do is to open the excel file open run the command um, art function f11 or just just paste it no need to click insert also um, and then run it if you will run it you will see like you know um, it will create a data inside the sheet as a tab in the sheet currently it is empty but if you will run it properly the data will be created here all you have to do is just copy the data all the columns create a new csv file and save it so in this way you will get your csv file the data with all the columns populated so once it is there once the file is there all you have to do is upload it via your snowflake interface I'm not going to perform the final step. You see, like the you know um, the columns are mapped properly, right? And all you have to do is you just click the load button. So once it is done, you will get the success message like uh, shown here. Now go to your Salesforce interface and go to your uh, uh, data lake objects. You will see like you know you will have a data lake object created. Contact one stream. This should be available. Sorry, this context home which is uh, no contact one stream which is available and uh, a storage type should be external because the data is still stored on the snowflake database right so uh, in order to see whether the data is applicable or not you have to go to the data explorer tab select your object mine one is contact one stream and if you see the data should start appearing here properly so in this way if you will see the zero copy architecture is explained as i have described earlier you can see like again here the storage is external the number of records is not populated last updated field is not populated because there is no injection there is no batch wise injection for this particular stream and that is why uh, it is this column for showing as blank so this is all about this video we have now reached to the end this is my first video guys please feel free to reach out to me with your questions comments and feedback below and follow me to know more about interesting developments in ai salesforce and aws world thank you